Did I waste my money buying the base model Mac Studio? And should I have just stayed with the 16 gigabyte M1 Mac mini? As a video professional, these are my thoughts and there is a hard truth that you need to realize if you're deciding between the studio and the mini. Is the Mac Studio worth the upgrade? Because it's almost twice the price. So short answer. I'm Rafael and welcome to the channel where our goal is to always fix it in camera and then finesse it in post. And I've had the Mac Studio for about three months now and the Mac Mini for well over a year. The Mini is a solid little machine and I used it exclusively for three months before getting the Mac Studio. It did have its limitations, but it did get me through very well. So when the Mac Studio was announced, it sounded like a great upgrade. The M1 Max and Ultra chips with the same unified RAM as the Mini and finally larger RAM options, it really sounded like a win-win. Getting one was a bit hard for the first few weeks, but I finally got my hands on one and I was super excited to use it. Seeing all the reviews of the M1 Pro and Max MacBook Pros was really selling the performance and the speed that I was looking for. But I do recall that the same thing happened when the Mini was announced. The praise for it was through the roof and the base model was all that you needed until I got it and I didn't have that same experience. Almost instantly there was issues with weird flickering, crashes, memory running out, and most of the apps that I needed as a video pro weren't ported yet and still running through Apple's emulation software Rosetta. So the mini was definitely underwhelming at the time. And I know that my use case is not typical, but there were many people that did end up upgrading from the base model to the 16 gigs of RAM to give themselves some headroom. And even more were willing to dump the Mac mini as soon as the M1 Pro and Max chips were launched. So let's take a step back. Did the M1 Mac mini work? Yes, I believe that it was great with Final Cut Pro and it was great for live streaming, but I wouldn't say that it was great with much else. It definitely didn't like doing streaming and Final Cut Pro, and until DaVinci and Photoshop became native, there were always little issues. But again, they were little issues. A lot of just waiting around for the computer to do the thing that I needed. But now that the apps I use every day are ported, like After Effects, Premiere, Cinema 4D, with the exception of a few plugins, they all run natively. This has made a huge improvement over the Intel machines, for sure. But that is the Mini. Is the Mac Studio worth the upgrade? because it's almost twice the price. So short answer, yes. You're goddamn right. I didn't expect it to be as dramatic for my use case. And I'm happy to report that yes, it is worth the upgrade. Initially, I was hesitant of getting the Ultra chip as the price gets ridiculous. And long-term, I do have my eye on an updated Mac Pro eventually. And from all the real world tests that I saw online, the Ultra wasn't a linear doubling of power. Renderers weren't twice as fast. Exports weren't exactly twice as fast. And if I wasn't looking at a potential Mac Pro deadline, I would have looked at it a little bit more seriously. The base model Mac Studio is definitely more than twice as fast for my workflow compared to the same projects on the Mac Mini. Rendering in Final Cut is more than twice as fast. Exporting is twice as fast. Rendering in After Effects, now that it's M1 native, is again more than twice as fast. DaVinci exports are super fast. Photoshop works with super large files with a breeze. It's smooth to navigate. They open fast. They save out really fast. The thing that I wanted most to work was Cinema 4D and Redshift. And the renders are dramatically faster on the Mac Studio base model than the Mac Mini. This, along with After Effects, is where I believe that the Ultra would actually be a nice benefit. Not twice the benefit, but still faster. This is one area that I should have upgraded, the RAM. I should have bought into the 64 gigabyte version. The main reason I didn't is that it was a three month wait time and also the extra cost. But alas, I got what I got and it's still four times more RAM than the base model Mac mini. And there's only been a few instances where the lower RAM has actually been an issue. And it's been using After Effects with multiple roto brushes with 4K footage after Effects just ran out of memory and was trying to utilize 56 gigs of RAM on the system, maxing out the RAM and pushing the rest into swap memory, causing the entire system to freeze. The memory pressure with After Effects is real. And no, I wasn't using the beta version, but for the most part, 32 gigs has been performing great. And I have found myself very confident with rendering in After Effects or Cinema 4D. And at the same time working in Final Cut Pro, 
or in Photoshop, listening to music, having YouTube playing, opening up Illustrator, the system doesn't get in the way of my workflow. Though when I am rendering, the system does slow down a little bit like choppy playback for YouTube videos or other applications take a little bit longer to open, but only when I'm rendering in After Effects or Cinema 4D and really pushing the processors to their max. Here's the hard truth though. If you're serious about creating and have the extra funds, skip right over the Mac Mini, be it the M1, the M2, I know it ain't cheap, but by the time you upgrade the RAM and get a larger hard drive, and yes, get a larger internal hard drive. It's been shown that the two terabyte version on both the Mac mini and the Mac studio have faster read write speeds. But even with the 512 gigabyte hard drive, you're looking at about $1,100 US. Sounds like a great deal, right? I actually don't agree. Comparatively, the base model Mac studio has twice the RAM at 32 gigs, three times the graphics cores at 24 versus eight on the mini, twice as many performance CPU cores, more ports, so you don't need to buy a weird third-party USB hub. It supports more monitors. It has a dedicated media engine with H.264 and HEV support. It has ProRes encode and decode. The M1 Max chips could easily run multiple Pro applications at the same time. It is equally capable of handling CPU intensive tasks like photo editing and compiling code and GPU driven tasks like creating motion graphics and processing complex video effects. So it is definitely worth it if you're doing those kind of applications. So big question, can the Mac mini do all of this? Sure, both of these computers will get the job done. But listen, one will save you money, the other will save you time, frustration, and in the long run, make you more money. Personally, I'd rather spend money than waste time. So you have to choose which is more valuable to you. If you understand that time is actually your greatest asset, you don't wanna be waiting around for a computer to catch up to you. Saving a few minutes rendering once doesn't sound like much, but when you're doing it day in and day out, it adds up and becomes huge. Spitting out another pass because you found a small mistake in the export is stress-free if you know that it will only take a few minutes. And that is today. What about three years from now when the application and the OS become more system intensive. I recommend that you save the time in this case, but that requires you to know what your actual workload will be. And in this video, I go over how to choose the best machine for you based on how you work and why choosing right is so important. Also, I live stream on my second channel where I deep dive on the creative process as well as freelance financials. So make sure you check that out. As always, thanks for watching.